For the second set of notes in section 9.4, we'll try the following example problems. First, we'll practice classifying triangles, and then we'll apply the Pythagorean theorem to various problems. Recall, you always want to label your longest side C, and then you could call the other two sides A or B in any order that you'd like. Remember, we are going to do A squared plus B squared and compare it to C squared. So since I call the side length of 5A, I'm going to do 5 squared plus 7 squared, and we're going to see how that relates to 8 squared. 5 squared gives us 25, 7 squared gives us 49, and we want to compare that to 64. Let's add 25 and 49 to get 74, and we're comparing that to 64. 74 is greater than 64. So if a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared, the triangle is acute. For the second example, we have to make 10 RC, and then once again, you could choose how you want to label your a's and b's. And then when we do a squared plus b squared and compare it to c squared, we end up getting 100 on both sides. So since a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the triangle is right. And then for the last triangle, we should get this. We should make our 8C. And then we know that 42.25 is less than 64, which means that A squared plus B squared is less than C squared, and the triangle is obtuse. For these examples, 1, 2, and 3, I'd like you to pause the video, try the problems on your own, and then hit play to compare your answers with mine. For problem one, it reads that we have an isosceles trapezoid. Isosceles is very important here because we're given the side lengths. So we know that the legs of an isosceles triangle are congruent, which means that those have to be the side lengths of 20. Then we have our two bases. We want to find the length of the altitude of this isosceles trapezoid. Well, because we've created two right triangles and a rectangle, we know that both of those yellow segments have to have a length of 40. We could subtract that from the entire big base, 60, which leaves us with 20 between those two segments. So if we divide by 2, each segment has a length of 10. That only works for an isosceles trapezoid. Then we could find the length of our altitude using the Pythagorean theorem on the triangle on the left and doing leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. When we simplify our answer, we get 10 radical 3. For number two, we want to find the perimeter of a rhombus with diagonals length 12 and 20. Well, remember, in a rhombus, the diagonals bisect each other. So I'm listing that here. And they're also perpendicular to each other. The diagonals are perpendicular bisectors. So we can use that small yellow triangle and write out the Pythagorean theorem and do leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, which would help us find one side of the rhombus. When we work it out and simplify, we take the square root of 136. So we want to simplify radical 136, which leaves us with 2 radical 34. So the length of one side of the rhombus is 2 radical 34, but we want to find the perimeter. We know that all sides of a rhombus are equal or congruent, so we can multiply 2 radical 34 by 4. Remember, we only multiply the outside numbers, which leaves us with 8 radical 34 for the perimeter of the rhombus. Please don't forget to add centimeters on the end of your answer because they gave us those units to begin with. Number three is a little complicated. You could think about it a couple different ways, but I'd be thinking about your directions there. North, south, east, west. I'm going to you that off to the side. And I'm going to start drawing it. So we know that Nadia's running three meters north, two meters east, four meters north, 13 meters east. So I'm drawing that out here to create a visual. And one meter north. In the end, we want to figure out how far is she from where she started. Well, she started right here, and she ended up here. So we want to find the length of that segment. I'm going to draw in that segment using a red pen. Because we were working with those directions north and east, we can actually create a right triangle. 
because we know that north and east are going to be perpendicular to each other, those directions. And we're going north and then east. So let's count how far north she ran total. So she ran three north, then four north, then one, so that's eight north. And then she ran two east and then 13 meters east, so that's 15 meters east. So you can use a squared plus b squared equals c squared to solve that. Or, instead of drawing out that diagram, what you can do is read the problem and figure out how far north she ran just from that. So that your diagram won't be as complicated. So she ran three north, then four north, then one north, and then she ran two meters east and 13 east. So let's add up all of our norths. That's, those are the yellows. So three plus four. Okay, so she ran eight meters north, which is what we have over to the left. And then she ran 15 meters east. So we could draw that in. And we've created that right angle there, and we want to find how far she was from where she started. Okay, so there's our hypotenuse of the right triangle. So at that point, we can do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or leg squared plus leg squared, remember the legs form the right angle of the triangle, equals hypotenuse squared, which we don't know, so I'll just call it c squared. So we take the square root of both sides of the equation to solve for c, and we end up getting that c is 17, which means that Nadia is 17 meters from where she started.